I want to talk about something which is a bit delicate. I'm of a particular generation that was brought up with Saturday evening television, black and white television for the most part, and then suddenly when I was about nine or ten it broke into rampant colour. And I remember BBC Two being created. And one of the great stars of that time was Silla Black and another one was Rolf Harris. Rolf Harris, who, as we know, was disgraced and sent to prison in 2014, I think, on 12 counts of indecent assault, a convicted paedophile. And in 2016, I think he was briefly in hospital. He'd been kept in Stamford Prison, which is where a lot of sex offenders are held. And now he has neck cancer, he is clearly dying. Apparently he is so ill he cannot eat. Gravely ill. And it strikes me that there are questions we have to ask and the questions we have to answer about the distinction between art and the performer. The distinction between who somebody is and what they do. And a lot of what Rolf Harris did was spectacular. His painting on television during a show, his singing, his impromptu singing, uh, and his banter, his banter and his interest in art and making art accessible. All of that is hugely commendable. His private life, of course, is absolutely reprehensible. We can look at characters like Caravaggio, a convicted murderer, who still nevertheless contributed some of the most important techniques to the development of Renaissance painting, techniques we still use today. The, the technique of light and dark. We see, it in, we see it in Star Wars. We see it in modern filmmaking. It's all a tribute to the skill of Caravaggio. Even Eric Gill. Eric Gill, you go to Westminster Cathedral, a, a beautiful cathedral, which is partly unfinished. It looks, uh, if, if you look at one end, it looks a little bit like St Pancras railway station. If you look at the other end, it, it looks like something out of um, Istanbul. And all the way down the church, there are these magnificent reliefs Stations of the Cross by Eric Gill. Are we going to rip them up and are we going to throw them out because Eric Gill was abhorrent, because Eric Gill had an awful private life? We have to dissociate the art from the artist. And I think in time, there will be things of Rolf Harris which will be remembered with affection. At the moment, I think... That's not going to happen. And maybe we need uh, other people to take over, to take, the, to take the reins of the sort of shows that he was doing and to fill that niche, because no one is doing that work now. No one is, uh, is performing uh, with that sort of abandon and celebrating art on television. Either they're being snooty about it and slightly academic or they're, or they're being satirical about it. But there is nobody doing what he did. There were two people who did it, in, in fact, in his day. Uh, towards the end of his time, there was a lady who took over who I think wasn't aware that she was in herself quite entertaining and a bit of a joke. That was her sister Wendy Beckett. I, I remember my godmother having a bit of an argument with Sister Wendy Beckett, two nuns, handbags at dawn or wimples at dawn. But Sister Wendy Beckett, of course, was utterly innocent in a way that Rolf Harris was utterly repugnant and evil. But it doesn't change the quality of his art. And his art, I'm afraid, was the art of the 20th century. His art was the presentation of himself, and how do we dissociate that from the monster that he clearly was? 
I don't know. I would love to know what you think. And of course, I am sorry that he's so ill.